It's August 2024 and you may have heard that Google are about to release a new Google TV streaming device, which is set to replace the Chromecast. Now, is this going to be any good for day to day streaming? Is it going to be any good for side loading? Is it going to be available in the UK? What's the specs? We've got all your questions answered. Stick around. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So you may have heard in the past few days that Google are launching next month the Google TV Streamer 4K and is really designed to be an uprated version of the Google Chromecast. So let's just have a look at the specs of the Google TV Streamer 4K. Well, first of all, it comes in two colors. So you've got hazel or you've got porcelain. The dimensions are a length of 6.4 inches, a width of three inches and a height of one inch and a weight of 5.7 ounces. It can support a resolution of up to 4K HDR at 60 frames per second. That's of course, as long as you've got a TV that supports that resolution. Video formats are Dolby Vision, HDR10, HDR10 Plus and HLG. Whilst it's audio formats, it's supporting Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus and Dolby Atmos. Connectivity, you've got Wi-Fi 802.11ac, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, so it's Wi-Fi 5. You've got Bluetooth 5.1 and you've also got a gigabit Ethernet port. The RAM inside the unit is 4 gigabytes and you've got a storage of 32 gigabytes. The power port on it is USB-C, which also supports data. And there's an HDMI 2.1 type a connector on there too. The operating system is Android TV OS and there's going to be quite a bit of smart home and AI integration into the unit too. So let's just go back over those specifications and see how they compare to the Chromecast. Well, straight away in terms of size, you can see it's a much bigger unit than the Chromecast, which used to be just hidden behind the TV plugged into the uh, HDMI port and really was quite discreet. Now this is designed really to sit in front of your TV and be on display. Now this is good for some, but if you've got your TV wall mounted, it can be a real pain. Also, unlike the Chromecast where the HDMI cable was built into it, there's not even one supplied with this. So they've sort of cut back on little things. I mean, what would it cost them really to have chucked in an HDMI cable? But if you've got the TV mounted on the wall, then you're gonna need a longer HDMI cable than the standard. Now, in terms of the resolution supported, both the 4K Chromecast and the 4K streamer do support up to 4K HDR at 60 frames per second, just as long as your TV and of course your HDMI cable supports it. Video formats supported are exactly the same as the 4K Chromecast, but audio formats, you have the addition of Dolby Atmos without HDMI pass through. So what does that mean? Well, it means that on the TV streamer, you don't need a Dolby Atmos capable sound system to be able to utilize the Dolby Atmos sound, unlike the Chromecast, which needed extra equipment to be able to do that. Now, connectivity, it's disappointing that it's only got Wi-Fi 5, which again is the same as the Chromecast. It would have been nice to have seen Wi-Fi 6 support included with this. You've got Bluetooth 5.1, but also as a bonus, it does actually have a gigabit ethernet port, which I think usually can only be found in top end devices such as the Shield. Now, in terms of the processor, they are saying that it's 22% faster and Android Authority have discovered, although it's not been 100% confirmed, that it's going to have a MediaTek MT8696 processor, which is the same one that is in the first generation Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K. Max. Now, in terms of RAM, we've had a increase in that. It's doubled from two 
gigabytes to four gigabytes and the storage has quadrupled from eight gigabytes to 32 gigabytes giving you even more space to install apps the streamer has a USB-C port which no doubt you'd be able to plug an OTG cable in there or a USB-C port adapter because not only does the port supp supply power but it also supports data too so that means USB 3 speed so great advantage over the fire stick and of course it has a gigabit ethernet which is built in and that can support up to a thousand megabits per second not that in this day and age at the moment you'd need that but you never know in future it's going to come with android tv os operating system now as it stands at the moment, the latest version of Android TV OS is based on Android 14. It has been rumoured that Android 15 may well be released at the latter part of this year. Is this device going to come with Android TV OS 14 or 15? Don't know at the moment. Nobody seems to be able to 100% confirm this. It may be a little too early to come with Android TV OS 15 as there's not been any rumours so far of a, uh, a, an official launch date for it but it's quite possible that it will come with 14 but be fully upgradable to 15 when it becomes available. So let's have a look what's in the box. So you've got the Google TV streamer device, the voice remote with two included AAA batteries. And whilst we're on the subject of the remote, the remote is slightly different to the Chromecast. You've actually got on the remote a star button, which I believe is a customizable button, which means that you can set that to launch whatever you want to launch so obviously if you wanted to launch a different loader when you push that button or your favorite app you can do you've also got a power adapter with a USB-C connector on the streamer end USB-A on the other end that goes into the socket a quick start guide and a safety and warranty document so is this a good streaming device well yes it is I mean it's not got the power of the Nvidia Shield Pro it's got a higher price tag than the Chromecast it's going to be shipping at $99.99 you can pre-order it for shipping when it's released on the 24th of September in the States there has been no release date for the UK or other countries but I shouldn't imagine that's very far behind I would imagine that is going to be released before Christmas so being as it's got Android TV or Google TV built into it then all the major streams streaming platform apps will be supported and again being based on Android OS it should allow side loading and you've got plenty of storage on there to put your apps if you're a bit of an app holder it says it comes with 32 gigabytes but don't forget you're going to lose some of that within the formatting and you're also going to lose some of that for the Android TV OS system and pre-installed apps so you're probably looking at around about 22 23 gigabytes of usable storage once you've fired the thing up as I said earlier you've also got Google Home built-in smart home support so that you can turn the heating up and down turn lights on and off check who's at the front door all built into it if you've got a Google Home compatible system this is also compatible with matter too and also the device is going to rely heavily on AI to enable the device to suggest movies TV shows and other streaming programs to you. You can ask it things like give me a list of movies that are on a certain theme or subject which some people like but others obviously don't. You've also got the ambient experience which again I've got that on my ONN 4K. Used it once I just imported some photos into it from Google Photos. It worked pretty well but to be quite honest with you it's not a deal breaker for me. So overall what are my thoughts on the device? yet the specifications seem good it's a shame it's not been built like a previous cast or a fire tv stick something that you can hide behind your tv like i say this could be a pain in the backside if you've got your tv wall mounted that means that's another cable to run to the device do you really want a device 
sat on your sideboard. That's if you've even got a sideboard near your TV nowadays. The lack of Wi-Fi 6 is disappointing as more and more routers are coming out with Wi-Fi 6 support, which gives you much faster and better Wi-Fi connections. It's great that they've increased the RAM to four gigabytes. And also it's great that they've increased the storage to 32 gigabytes, meaning that hopefully you'll never ever run out of space. Also great that they're using USB-C, so much faster data transfer rate if you was to buy a USB hub and OTG cable to plug into this. And I also like the fact that there's a customizable star button on the remote control to put in whatever app you want. There's also a round button on the back of the streamer and when you push it, your remote control will emit a beep, which means that if you've lost it, you can easily locate it. So let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. It would be good to hear from you. Also, whilst you're here, check out the description of this video. I've got loads of great links down there for you, including a link to my Amazon shop, VPNs, Fire TV sticks, Fire TV cubes, and Fire Stick accessories. If you like this video and you think you've got friends, family, or work colleagues that might also like it, then please don't forget to share this on your social media timelines. Check me out on X. I'm at CWTEK. Also check out my website. It's CWTEK.co.uk. Thanks for watching. Speak to you again soon.